Hey there, little mama. I'm wondering, are you feeling a little anxious? We've got Thanksgiving coming. There's some really um, kind of different things going on in our world, and our culture is a little upside down. You may be getting all the stuff ready for Thanksgiving for yourself and wrapping up your kids' school stuff and getting ready to head into the Christmas season. You might just be feeling anxious about everything. And what I want to tell you is, I've kind of been feeling anxious too. And so this morning, I spent some time in God's Word, and I want to talk to you about it, what I found. And I think it's going to help you. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Moms Like Us podcast where moms just like you learn strategies, systems, and skills through expert interviews and real-life insight designed to take your marriage, mothering, and home to the expert level. Hi, I'm Mona Corwin, your mom mentor and host, author, international speaker, and the founder of the Moms Like Us Academy. I've been coaching moms for over 25 years, and I have some really good news for you. Motherhood isn't a natural talent. It's a skill and you can learn it. You can crush it at motherhood instead of motherhood crushing you. So let's get to today's show. Well, it is definitely a time where anxiety can pop up. And I wanted to get a hold of my anxiety that I was feeling. It wasn't just like like anxiety that needs to be treated with a counselor. It was just like this everyday kind of anxiousness. And I couldn't figure out what was causing it. It seemed like my to-do list, I wish I could show it to you. It's so long. It would wake me up in the middle of the night. Has this happened to you where you're laying in bed at night and you're going through the list of things that you didn't do today and then trying to remember them for the next day and what was on that list that was supposed to be on there? And it, your mind just goes round and round and round this list in our heads. And it robs us. This constant cycling, this circling back around that we can do. And we have got to get control of that. Because it's stealing our present. It's stealing the moment we're in. And it's things that already happened. Or it's things that are going to happen. And we need our sleep, number one, if we're doing it in the evening. And it can take away the moment that you're in. It takes away the present. And we need to have power over that. We need to have power over the present that we're in. We need to be present for our children. We need to be enjoying the moment we're in. God's told us in his word in Ecclesiastics in uh, 5.16, which I was in today, that God gives people the enjoy, uh, the ability to enjoy good things. He gives us the ability to enjoy things. And so we need to be enjoying them. To be in the moment and to know that whatever comes, we're not alone and God will work it out. We live in um, a world that was not originally supposed to be like this. I don't think our bodies were even made for this kind of uh, spiritual activity that's pressing down on us, sin and uh, sorrow and all of this. Our bodies were made for the Garden of Eden, right? Well, we still have the same bodies. They're affected by sin and the, and the fallen world, of course, but we're, we weren't made for this. We were, we were made for something different. And you know what that is. We were made for what God created us for in the Garden of Eden. And we can, we can struggle trying to keep it all in line and make it work right. The first thing we have to remember is this isn't the way it's supposed to be. The second thing we need to remember is it's okay because God knew that. And that's why he's with us, and that's why he's in us. We have the Holy Spirit to help and guide us and hearing from him and knowing truth. And we have his his word. We have God's word. And he's just so kind to give us the truth that we need inside of, of, of his word. 
And that's where I went this morning. I thought, I've got to get control of this. I've got to take back my days and my nights. <laughs> so I'm not getting up in the middle of the night and making yet another to-do list. Oh my gosh, I have so many. <laughs> I bet you do too. The wonderful thing about being in the present is knowing that God has the future. He has the future. He knows what's going to happen and he's ready to be there for us. And if it's going to be joyful, then he's ready for that too. We have to remember this. We have to remember this. Our past is already gone. You know this. You already know this. And there's nothing we can do about that. And our future isn't here. And the more we think about, I know you've thought about this, like the five different ways that you're going to make sure you don't forget everything that you need to have in the car for whatever you're doing next, we're thinking of all five different things we could forget or that we could, uh, things that could go wrong. And we're making plans so that it doesn't get messed up. And we're making plans in the moment we're in for a moment that may never come. We may never have any of those problems. We may be able to just remember what we have to do or rely on the fact that we have written things down. And, you know, if you have the Moms Like Us planner, you know that's exactly some of the things we do. We schedule life. We don't just, uh, you know, we don't just schedule life. I'm sorry. We don't just schedule life. We plan it. And then we make adjustments as we go. Because we're moms. We have to. <laughs> Everything has to be changed. And no day will go perfectly planned. And no uh, problem will be perfectly solved in advance. And, sweetheart, no Thanksgiving is going to be perfectly done. When we move forward um, with the holidays coming up. And Thanksgiving, of course, is the very next one. I made myself a challenge. And I don't know, maybe you'd like this challenge too. I've challenged myself to be in the moment as much as possible. So I added in a couple things before the week to make sure that that is going to happen. One of those things is, I'm not going to do much cooking. My kids are going to do cooking. They're all going to bring their thing and what they like to make, and we all cook in the kitchen. I gave it up trying to make all of Thanksgiving and make all the food and lay it all out on the table with beautiful dishes and perfect napkins. The napkins were wrinkled last year, you know. Uh, one year, the turkey was really, really bad. We decided we're not going to have turkey this year. It's just the way it goes. But I've made a decision that imperfect is perfectly fine. Will you remember that? Imperfect is perfectly fine, little mama. So when it comes to the planning and the execution of Thanksgiving or anything else that's coming up, Maybe you have a play you have to take your kids to and their clothes aren't all right. You're taking Christmas pictures and you can't find something. Imperfect is perfectly fine and it's good enough. When I think about the anxiety that some people have over being around family and other people during Thanksgiving and the holidays, I want you to also remember that it's one day. You don't have to solve all of your family issues on one day. And it doesn't, doesn't serve us well to remember bad things that have happened on previous gatherings and live in fear that that's, that thing is going to happen again. That person is going to do this thing again. As we sit and think about those things happening, we can get more anxious about the holiday. We have to put our minds and set them on the things that are good. 
and choose, number one, to not get offended. This is a really great teaching. It's by John Brevere. He has a book. It's amazing. It's not in my top 10, but certainly in my top 20 of books that I recommend. It is called The Bait of Satan. And it is, I always thought, okay, what is the bait of Satan, right? You would think, oh, it's money, it's sex, it's addictions, it's, you know, bluebell ice cream. (laughs) Definitely for me. (laughs) Mm -mm. The enemy wants us to get offended. And it says in Revelation that the body, um, that the love of the body would grow cold and people would become offended. And when we get offended over things, it immediately brings up angst. And it's the start of trouble. So I've told myself for a long time after I read that book, I would just say, I'm, I'm not easily offended. And if you've been around me at all, you probably have heard me say it at one point. And I think it's kind of come true. I am not easily offended. It's interesting how our minds work. You know, this is the mindset stuff that we've been taught that says um, if you think something, your mind will start looking for clues outside uh, in your reality to prove that it's true. This is really important as we're thinking about not being anxious and that whirling list and getting offended and things that are getting ready to happen. I mean, we can't control whether or not we've messed up our turkey, but we can control our thoughts before it so that the little things that come up, we don't get all upset because we haven't been all riled up for so long. Today is a day for us to take a challenge and say, I'm not going to be easily offended when I go into this holiday and I'm interacting with people and certain things are happening that I don't like or someone says something snarky or, you know, brings up a bad memory or reminds you of things that you've done in your past. If you need to address them for what they say, then choose another day. Choose another day. Choose not to be offended that day and say to yourself, I will let them know later and choose another day. When we gather for Thanksgiving and all of that, we're bringing imperfect people together imperfect people that have wounds and we may not even know the things that are going on in their life. We may not have seen them since the last holiday and we don't know what they're struggling with. So go easy on them and believe in your heart that that they'll go easy on you. Don't get offended. Keep yourself in the reality of the moment that we're in. Don't let the enemy steal and rob and divide you in your families, in your holiday. There will be things that come up because Satan doesn't like us to be thankful. He doesn't like us to rejoice with one another. He certainly doesn't like to see us being kind to each other. So he's going to be whispering in, in, in our ears. And you know what? We just need to tell him to be quiet. And I think you can use the word shut up. I would just say, just shut up. I'm not listening to your junk. And God is so good. He tells us in his word what we do when we're starting to, you can feel that that anxiety starting to rile up. And this is what he says. Now, I love this piece of scripture. It was one of the first pieces of scripture that I memorized way back when, when my kids were little. And I found out that, hey, God's word's got some answers in it. It's, um, yeah, my Bible has been attacked by my dog. Yeah. (laughs) But it still works. God's word is still true, even if it's been chewed on by a puppy. (laughs) Philippians 4 is 
where we're at, where we're going for this scripture. And I always remember where it's at, and you can remember this too. I remembered that I needed to flip to Philippians 4, peace, before I flip out. (laughs) So I always knew that it was Philippians 4 where I was going to go, and that's where we're going to go right now. God tells us, he says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I love this. I love the scripture. Even when I read it, my heart just kind of swells. Because it, in, in, another, um, in another version, it says, and the peace of of Christ, uh, the peace of God will uh, will guard your heart and mind. It will be it'll be beyond your wildest dreams that you will feel the peace, and it will be a peace that's unlike anything you've ever felt or you do feel. And when I feel the peace of God, I like even now I can just just wanting to feel it. You can just feel all of your muscles. Just relax as we realize we get to have the peace that surpasses all understanding. A peace that is is given by a God that knows our bodies were not made for this. He didn't want us to be in this kind of a mess. He wanted us to be in the garden and all of that. But he knew. He knew what would happen. And he sent a Savior to make sure that we could continue on with him after this this lifetime. But he didn't just tell us to, hey, you know, just pray and then you'll and give God thanks for what he's done. That's really good. Prayer and thanksgiving, amazing. Yes, and then I'm going to get peace. He did something even better. He told us how to do it. Now, you know, in the Moms Like Us Academy, I, we really hone in on teaching you real things on how to do something, not just three points and we're out. We teach you how, but we teach you why, and then we go along with you till you get it. And that's what makes the Academy so good. And as moms, we have, we have lots of want to's but we can get stuck and God knows we can get stuck too. And he tells us how. I love this. It says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. (laughs) I love that. Fix your thoughts on whatever is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keeping, keep putting into practice all that you have learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the peace of God will be with you. Sweetheart, this is it. Inside my challenge, I reminded myself, I'm going to memorize this in another version because I have the version that I've always memorized, but just to get a new fresh a freshness about it. If we fix our thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable and excellent and worthy of praise, he said that's the final thing. Do that. If you're doing that, you're not going to get offended. You're not going to worry and be anxious. You know what you are? (laughs) You're going to have the power over your present. You're going to be able to tell the devil to be quiet because you are, you are setting your mind. You know, mindset isn't a new, uh, a new now word. It's, 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 it's a God word. He says, set your mind, set your mind, set yourself that this is the way it's going to be. Now, 
we know that things are going up, going kind of little haywire in our country and and it's maybe it's true you are going to have you you know for sure that someone is going to for sure is going to say something to you and something is you're going to be they're going to be offended and you're you know there's probably going to, you know you know <laughs> i don't have to give you any examples it's already gone in your head <laughs> right <laughs> we know that but that's why god tells us at the beginning he says with everything, prayer. Give prayer. Go to God. He knows what you need. This scripture is so amazing. It is amazing to calm our hearts. And he, he uses the word anxious. Do not be anxious. He doesn't want us to be anxious. He's not saying, oh, just chill. He's not saying that. He's not like, oh, just don't think about it. Every, you know, just don't look. Go the don't look at the man behind the curtain, kind of the Wizard of Oz thing. No, he's saying, don't be anxious. He knows what you need. And you pray to him and say, I am really nervous about this. And I need your peace. And I know you tell me to do these things, to think on these things, but I'm going to struggle. And I need your help. And God will, God will help you, honey. God will help you. And I'm, I'm kind of excited that when I got up from my, from my quiet time this morning and I thought, oh, I think this will help the girls. And I hope it's helped you. Thanksgiving is a beautiful time. Just to, I mean, it's the, <laughs> it's the, um, the holiday of food. Like that's all we do. We eat and if you watch football or whatever and just hang out together. And remember that the people that are around you, they're not perfect. And they're not going to do things perfectly so it doesn't upset you. So set your mind. Pray about things that are going wrong. Pray about your, your desires and your concerns. And ask God to help you. Ask Him to change it. And then when Thanksgiving comes... Don't be easily offended. And you will have the ability to take the power over your present moment. And you'll really be able to enjoy it. Okay, that's it for now. I hope you have a really great Thanksgiving, sweetie. And I got more for you coming up in the weeks ahead on what to do for the holidays as a mom. So I will talk to you later and...